What's up everybody? Pete McPherson here. In this video, we're gonna go over the three different methods to use AI for blogging. So a few things, this is gonna be pretty beginner friendly. I'm gonna share some broad pros and cons to each method as well as the general steps and uh, some fun tips and tricks along the way to get really great content faster with AI. And I'll also talk a lot about tool recommendations to start. So let's just dive in. For all these examples, I am going to be using a brand new blog post on LinkedIn profile tips. This is top of mind for me at the moment because I was redoing LinkedIn and I jotted down just a few notes before I started recording of just random stuff I thought of. I mean, I literally spent less than a minute doing this. So I was typing out a few ideas here. So this is what we're gonna use. The first method is to use ChatGPT, Claude, um, any sort of AI chat tool. So obviously ChatGPT is the big one and you can use it for free, but I actually think the free version of Claude is much better. You have a much larger context window, meaning it'll kind of keep track of a lot more content, but I do think ChatGPT is better if you are on the pro version, which I am. And there's a few pros, speaking of pro. Uh, number one, you're gonna get the best access to the newest technology. This is updated like every day. <laughs> Every couple of days, we get new features. And in ChatGPT, you can do images directly. I've actually been doing some featured images uh, recently, and I'll, I'll show you my prompt for these things. Uh, and you can also have it search the web. You can ask it for an outline for a blog post, and it can consult Bing. It can search. It can also give you back different formats. It can look at PDFs. It can look at tables and all sorts of stuff. The newest tech is going to be using these tools directly not using a third party AI tool. But obviously there's a big con here and that is it's a lot more tedious. Actually going from ChatGPT uh, to your WordPress site is like kind of a monstrosity. There's lots of copying and pasting and then there's gonna be formatting and editing or whatnot. It's, it's a lot it, and I think it does take longer. Now it might yield less editing. I'll put that up here, might yield less editing, but there's more back and forth before you actually get to the editing phase. So here are the general steps. Uh, so I, I have a course called AI for Bloggers. You don't need to go buy it, but this is basically what I teach. Compile a little bit of basic info about the post before you start. Just the, the facts, the data, your opinions. If it's a review post, your opinions. What do you think about the product? Maybe you grab a link to the product where they can, the AI can get access to its pricing or something like that. Prompt it with the facts and facts. I have a whole YouTube video about this, which I'll link before to in the description. Uh, but you should definitely go check out my facts and facts prompts. If you don't know what that means, you shouldn't. It's just something I made up, but go watch this video. It's free, you can do those. I also have a tool, Promptimizer. I built this. Don't go sign up for it yet because I'm actually redoing it to be free. Right now it's paid only. <laughs> but for example, I'm gonna do keywords and I'm gonna copy in my facts and facts, which is not a lot. This is just an example. I'll post this in here, hit submit, and it'll actually show you my uh, prompts that I use. So it's basically this, I wanna write an article, here are some details, and then it has details about my writing style or whatever. Now, again, I built Promptimizer because ChatGPT takes forever. So I would start with this, but usually you would have to write that out. I highly recommend getting some prompts that you use for blogging and put them in a spreadsheet or put them in a Google Doc or sign up for Promptimizer once I release the free version. And you won't have to like take quite as much time getting started. I'm actually gonna go back and then I'm gonna get my second one. I'll grab this right here. I, I mean, I Promptimizer is just click to copy, right? That's why I made this. So I don't have to do a whole bunch of copying and pasting. I'm just priming it with information. Here's some more information. Uh, I don't even care about this. And then going back to my steps here, just get the outline. There it is. Okay, create the outline. And again, Claude will do the same thing. I found that the, the free version of Claude.ai actually works really well. Really, really happy with their tool. So here is this. Oh, it's doing markdown. Uh, okay, well, this, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. So at this point, we can prompt back and forth to edit the outline. I think this is important. The more time you spend kind of working through the facts and facts, the general information about the post, and optimizing the outline, 
the easier it is gonna to be to edit and the faster this is gonna get done. So what I would do here, if I'm gonna like actually write this blog post, I'm gonna read through this outline and ask it to make edits. Remove this section, add another section here, stuff like that. I'm not gonna do it right this second because that's not what this video is. But again, the, temp, the tip is to spend a little bit more time in this phase than uh, the last editing phase. It'll make the final editing phase easier. Final thoughts, okay. And then you can just do write the intro, right? And it's gonna write it, it's probably gonna do markdown again. It is gonna do markdown again. But this is one of my other tips here. You can actually have ChatGPT do the formatting you want. I actually like markdown and I think if I imported this into WordPress, it would be okay. It might actually recognize some of these things. Uh, do I have the thing open? I do have my site open. I'm just gonna add a new post here. Uh, put in a title, hit paste, and it does actually turn these into H2s. That's good. <laughs> That's very good. But you can also have it do HTML if you want to. Or you can just have it do normal text formatting. I think up in one of my prompts down here, I mentioned something, yeah, format everything in Markdown. I should have deleted that, right? That's what I usually use in Promptimizer, and it doesn't have, it doesn't actually give the text code formatting, if you will. So you go back and forth. And then you continue all the way until you're done. Write the next section. I would also edit as you go. Rewrite that to be funnier and more personable. Rewrite that to include a simple table, et cetera, et cetera. And then you continue on until you're done. You copy and paste each section like this. You copy this and then you go over to WordPress or uh, a Google Doc or something else. So there is the intro and then I do write, write the next section and include a simple table. I don't even know what the next section is, but just as an example, you can kind of get what you want out of this back and forth. You can have it redo things and whatever. I think you get my point. So uh, the other cool thing about using ChatGPT directly, especially if you have the pro version, because I don't think you can do this in the free, you could say generate a nice image that will go with the section above. So I'm going to wait until it's done. Generate a uh, simple image to go with the section above, right? Make it 16 by nine. Yeah, okay, fine. So you're gonna do this and it's gonna take a couple of minutes and it'll give you an image. So that's one big pro of using ChatGPT Premium right there. Uh, and here's the prompt. I'll actually include this uh, below this video. This is just what I've been using for my featured images. I'm working with some styling and stuff. I usually put in what I want right here, like person working on laptop person working at desk, person counting dollar bills <laughs> or whatever. And then the style, this was just me tweaking over and over again. I even gave it my brand color, like a sharp purple color. And then, you know, minimal solid lines, almost dark background. This isn't the perfect image. <laughs> it's got a weird little eye thing in here, but it's LinkedIn. That's what we're talking about. And so, well, there you go. You could use this. I don't know if it'd be that great of a thing to do, but whatever. Let's move on to the second method of blogging. And that's gonna be using third-party tools. All right, and the ones I have used, I've used actually all of them, but the ones I use most frequently are fab.ai, disclosure alert, I built this tool for my needs and I love it and I think it works better than any other tool in the market, but that's just for my needs. And it has users, to be fair. Koala.sh is one that came up uh, several months ago that a lot of people use. Zimwriter, I've heard great things about. It's Windows only, so I don't use it. And from all the videos, it looks really ugly and I just don't like using ugly things, but I've heard the actual tool <laughs> works great. And there's a lot of different features. Like there's a ton of features and Zimwriter, almost too many features in my opinion, but alas, you can go check that out. And it's also really affordable. Uh, although I think he does, he has increased the price recently and you have to use your API key. So you pay for the API cost, which is stupid cheap by the way, but alas. Autoblogging.ai is one I've seen on YouTube. I personally don't like the content that Autoblogging.ai spits out. I do like their interface. It's much less ugly than Zimwriter. Um, and their bulk tool is really is really speedy. It's really handy. It's nice. Uh, obviously, I'm biased, but I like Fab.ai. So here's the steps. Or actually, no, pros and cons. This is so much faster. It's so much faster, mainly because you don't have to do as much copying and pasting and formatting, like these tools, ChatGPT was not built for bloggers. These tools are built for bloggers and most of them specifically WordPress or Wix or Squarespace where you can easily copy and paste in 
like HTML and stuff. And so it's going to do a lot of extra blogging work for you. Fab.ai, even in the bulk editor, will automatically send to your WordPress site. It'll select the category using AI. It'll set the permalink, right? It'll do some extra blogging task that ChatGPT just doesn't do, right? And it's going to take care of all the formatting and no copying and pasting. And it's so much faster in that respect, right? And again, all the prompts are baked in. There's less tweaking and back and forth. Like you can set your own custom styles for like each brand or whatever. And then you can kind of be done. Like you can just set it and leave it and you don't have to worry about it anymore. You'll figure out some things on the front end to get your tone, your style, your voice, that sort of stuff. But then you're done. You don't have to do this over and over again. It's set. I saved it in the app and that's not like chat GPT, right? You can create custom GPTs to kind of do the same thing. And that's helpful, I guess. Um, one of the bigger pros here is this is like, compared to the bulk editing tools, single editors, creating single posts, it keeps saying top of mind, right? It's gonna allow you to focus on the content and not the prompts. It's gonna allow you to focus on the content ranking and not AI. ChatGPT, you're kind of like, you're thinking about prompts and wording things correctly. With these third party tools, you don't have to think about that quite as much, right? And obviously there are cons here. So the cons are all of these tools are more pricey than just using ChatGPT. Maybe not by a ton. In fact, they're getting cheaper, but it's slightly more expensive. And frankly, uh, it can yield meh results, right? Like mediocre blog posts. I think you might actually get better content out of ChatGPT if you spend a lot of time working on your prompts to get it exactly what you need it to be. And if you don't mind copying and pasting and formatting, I think you're going to get a better representation of your style. That said, all of these tools, not just fab.ai, but all these tools have gotten way better at style and tone and formatting and that sort of stuff. And I'm here to tell you, this is crucial. Outline editing. I did not realize uh, when I first built fab.ai, I had the bulk editor and you couldn't edit the outlines. It's crucial, right? It just saves so much time and makes the content so much better. Editing and optimizing the outline. Uh, so here are the basic steps. It's the same thing as using ChatGPT. Just go ahead and compile the blog post info, like the facts and facts, if you will. Again, this is optional, but it's just gonna yield better content. <laughs> it just is. Generate the outline and then edit and optimize the outline. I'm actually gonna put this in uh, to Fab. I'm gonna add new post, keywords, and then under info, I'm just going to grab this stuff. Just toss it in there. Um, this is an info post. Just gonna hit submit here. And then come down here, uh, LinkedIn profile tips. I'm gonna go to the editor and choose the fastest GPT 3.5, which only uses half credits and fab.ai, uh, by the way. Hit get outline, and this will take like 20, 30 seconds. And again, I think, spoiler alert for this entire video, I think this is gonna be my recommendation for most bloggers is to use a third party tool, but do post one at a time. Bulk content is really great. <laughs> I've tried it, but there's just too many cons, which I'll get to in just a second. It's so much better if you can edit the outlines one by one, and then also put it in WordPress and edit like right then. It's so much better. I don't know why it does this every now and then. Uh, so I'm just like tidying up the outline a little bit. Headline, updating open to section. That's just pulling in my stuff here. Facts, and you can add more sections. Um, add an H2. How to treat work history. And then I'll add another one, like bonus. How a uh, broad content strategy for LinkedIn. And I can't type or spell strategy for LinkedIn. All right. And then you can also add little uh, like custom prompts right here. Consistency is key. Think of this as starting a conversation, not just publishing. All right. Oh, whatever. I'm gonna save my outline and then just, I'm just gonna run it. This will take like, I don't know, two, three minutes maybe. And uh, we'll see what happens. But the point is keeping things top of mind, right? This is one of my big 
pros of using these third-party tools, you don't have to think about AI. You don't have to think about prompts. You think about the content. Making it what you need it to be in order to rank is just crucial, right? You're gonna get so much better content. It's gonna follow your style and your voice. And it's gonna be easier to edit once you get it into WordPress. It's just gonna be so much better, right? So I, forget, I kinda lost my place here. I was talking about a lot of stuff. Um, okay, generate the outline, edit, run the post, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, edit broad strokes using AI. Um, I, I built this in a fab.ai. I'll show you in just a second. Actually, once this is done, you can just do like one clicks, one click edits with like prompts um, that you can save, export it to your site, etc. Again, this is a huge benefit over using ChatGPT, right? Formatting, saving time there. And then you edit and publish on your site. It's the same thing. But saving time with the formatting, no copying and pasting, uh, that sort of stuff, so much faster than using ChatGPT, for sure. So, um, while this is working, I will talk a little bit here about tips. Um, okay, my tip here is to try all these tools. Every single one of these, fab.ai, Koala, Zimwriter, I actually don't know about Zimwriter. They may not have a free trial, now that I think about it, but autoblogging.ai does, even jasper.ai does. Use all of them for the same post. Just as an example, like LinkedIn, what am I doing? LinkedIn profile tips. Use all those tools to do this one post and see which one you like better. And look for two things, the actual experience uh, and the content. Like which tool actually gives the better drafts, the content. You can tweak all of these tools, so those are gonna get better with time, but which one is like, is there, are there ones that are like way off the mark? For me, that was using autoblogging to AI. Uh, looks like my post is done here. Um, autoblogging to AI just wasn't it for me. I was just like, there's no working with this. Content was not what I wanted it to be. Uh, both fab.ai and Koala do much better content. And then the tool, the experience. Using the tool, which one's better, right? What are the features you want? That sort of stuff. And uh, really quick, I'm just going to profile picture, headshot, smiling, headline, include some relevant keywords. I'm actually gonna click that and say, rewrite this to include a simple bullet point list. And it's gonna rewrite it. And I would go through my entire post just doing like really broad edits like this. It always does the conclusion, it's like way too long. So I click that one, rewrite this to be shorter and more punchy. Hopefully it'll like tidy this up quite a bit. Yeah, okay, shorter at least, right? You can add more here, do whatever you want. Go back up and I'm gonna send this to WordPress. Fab says sent to WordPress. So I come back here and then I would do the editing. Simple as that. Post. LinkedIn profile tips, crafting a strong personal brand. I should have like changed that title. I'm gonna be like, um, LinkedIn profile tips, like five LinkedIn profile tips uh, you can implement in an hour. I don't know why I'm changing it here. I already sent it to WordPress. I wasn't paying attention. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's just click this one. You don't need to see all this stuff, but alas, save draft. And there we go. We just start editing right from there and uh, see what it looks like. It's a great looking blog post though, right? I had to do some editing and do a picture or whatever, but there it is. So last but not least, using uh, these tools for bulk content. There's a lot of bulk content tools. I do wanna mention this just cause this right here is actually a huge pro. So it's obviously way faster, right? And you can actually do this uh, in Fab. If I go to posts, I'll move uh, LinkedIn profile tips to the top and then hit save changes. And I can do, I can run like all of these posts in a row. Number of posts to run, two, use this one right here, post status. I can just set it to publish, like literally just publish when you're done. Um, TLDR, et cetera, run post. <laughs> right, and I could just run four or five, seven posts at a time. This is obviously way faster. And quite frankly, the other pro here is that quantity has a quality all of its own. If we're talking about ranking, especially new sites, if you publish five to 10 posts a month, you're just not gonna get there at this day and age. It's just not, that, that strategy is dead. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, there's absolutely nothing you can do. And if you started a blank website from scratch, trying to rank in Google, doing five to 10 posts per month, you're just not gonna do it. 
I don't care how good you are. I don't care how good the content is, rather. If you have a million backlinks, maybe you could figure out how to do that, but I don't think that's possible. Quantity does have a quality all its own. And the faster you can get these blog posts out, the better, right? Writing the fifth section. I'm actually just gonna cancel this. Stop it. I don't wanna keep going. Use all my fab.ai credits. Um, the cons, obviously, is there's less control over the content, especially not being able to edit the outlines in bulk content editors. Um, again, you can still, like for fab, like it's still gonna consider this. I can actually enter in an inspiration URL, like LinkedIn profile tips, which is like, they literally have their own blog post here, which I'm never gonna outrank, by the way, right? Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna beat this blog post now that I think about it. But you, I could paste that in there, and now if I run it, it'll consider that stuff. But even then, I don't get to edit the outline beforehand and stuff like that. It's just not completely optimal. And then the bigger one for me personally is the content isn't top of mind when I go to edit this stuff, right? Like, I don't wanna run 50 blog posts and then try to edit all of them. Like, it's not gonna be top of mind. I won't know really what to do. I have to kind of like reassess what the content is, what it should be, how to rank it, that sort of stuff. I just don't think that's optimal. I think that's a big con. One or two tips that can really help with that is to, if you're going to use bulk editors to really pump out content, just do like one little cluster at a time. Maybe I have a little cluster on my site about LinkedIn and it's gonna be like less than 20 posts. Maybe it's like 12 blog posts, all to do with LinkedIn, some stuff on profiles and posting content, LinkedIn pulse, like that sort of stuff. Do those at the same time, right? Like cluster them, take, approach bulk content with intentionality. Here's what I'm gonna do and why. These are all gonna to link to each other. It's gonna be so much better, so much easier and faster for editing, internal linking and that sort of stuff. All of these tools, I think, I know Zimwriter does, I know Koala does, I know Fab.ai does, they have internal linking capabilities. But, well, this is a bad example because I didn't actually set this up for this site, but it's not gonna be great if you're just willy-nilly running all the posts in the world. But if you can do like one little cluster at a time, it's gonna be that much easier, right? So there you go. So my overall opinion here, I think, especially for beginner bloggers, thinking about using AI, I would possibly suggest skipping over ChatGPT. It's an advanced tool for blogging. Yeah, the tool actually works and it's easy. And I do like the fact that you're gonna get always the most up-to-date tech, but you have to worry about prompts. You have to think about prompts. You have to think about AI. That combined with copying and pasting, it's just gonna take a really long time. It's probably not what I would suggest. I would suggest using a third party tool and doing the one at a time blog post creator. Don't don't jump right into bulk content unless you really know what you're doing and you're able to kind of like do a cluster at a time, get in there, edit, publish, do internal links, that sort of stuff. One at a time editors where you can like have full control over the outline and stuff like that are just, it's just so much better, right? So much better. I think that's where most people should start. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to drop me fat comments in the uh, comment section below this video. And I hope you have a good day. There you go. Adios, my friends. Happy blogging.